Hello, OLA. Thank you very much for the invitation to talk to you today virtually. My name is Linda Sue Park, and I'm the author of many books for young readers. Today, I'm going to be talking about my newest title, which is The One Thing You'd Save. The illustrator, it's a fully illustrated uh, story told in linked poems, and the illustrator is Robert Say Hang, who has done this wonderful cover art for the book. The setting for the one thing you'd save is a classroom, and the teacher has given her students an assignment. This is the opening poem of the book told by the teacher. Imagine that your home is on fire. You're allowed to save one thing. Your family and pets are safe, so don't worry about them. Your most important thing, any size. A grand piano, fine. So that's how Miss Chang, the teacher, opens the book with this challenge to her students. And throughout the book, the students respond uh, to that prompt that she has given them. And they have very different responses to the one thing that they would save. Uh, the poems are all in the shijo form, which is a traditional uh, Korean form of poetry. It's a syllabic form with three lines and a set number of syllables per line. Um, but I have, um, I have used the shijo form in an untraditional way. Um, at this book, as with many others, people ask, you know, how I got the idea or what was the inspiration for this. And um, what I love about this book is that it's just so completely like knotted up with uh, my actual writing process. So first of all, I was thinking about how um, we uh, try to depict character in a book, in a novel. You know, how do we try to get across what a character is like? How do we make that character come to life for the reader? And one of the ways we do that is through their stuff, you know, through their things, the things that they own and hold dear. Um, I often think about, um, one thing I think about is, I'm gonna walk into my character's bedroom, you know, if they have a bedroom. What do I see without them there? What do I see in the bedroom in their bedroom that tells me about this person. So that's one kind of character exercise that I do sometimes just in my head, sometimes I write it down. Uh, when For all my other books, you know, to, for me to get to know this character and then also sometimes to write about it and to convey the character to the reader. So that was the idea of things or stuff. That's sort of the, the origin of that. And my original intent was that I was going to have this classroom of 20 something students and I was going to write a poem for each kid. And that was going to be the book. I was going to write a poem for each kid. There'd be 20 something poems plus the teacher, you know, all together. And then as I began writing those poems, that's not what happened. Um, they became very real to me, those kids. And as they would in a classroom with the teacher, they started talking to each other. So the book became more of an exchange between the class. It became a depiction of a classroom discussion rather than just one kid, then the next kid, then the next kid, then the next kid. So that's how the book ended up coming out um, with Miss Chang and her students having um, a very lively discussion about the one thing you'd save. So I hope you all enjoy reading it and, um, and maybe thinking about what the one thing you would save would be. Thank you.